this is a piece about the history of the Japic. The Japic was built in 1925 uh, by Walters. Walters was a, a rider for Zenith, a works rider for Zenith. He also owned a coach building company called Jarvis. Uh, this was a, a job between Jarvis and Jap. Jap supplied the engine. Uh, they built this car and they used to, they, to build to break records. Um, the current, that car in 1925 broke every record from a quarter of a mile up to 100 kilometers. Uh, it did 100 kilometers with 70 mile an hour average. So Walters ran the, the Japic up until 1926. In 1926, it was sold to Gwenda Hawke Stewart. And Gwenda Hawke Stewart is pictured here. Uh, she took the car to France and ran the car as the HS Special um, at Montelary. And she broke the 100 kilometer record with it. Uh, sadly, it was destroyed in a fire in 1931 when her workshop was destroyed under the banking of Montelary. Um, the, the workshop fire actually closed the circuit for about three months uh, while they had to resurface it. So nobody knows where the rest of the Japit's gone. Uh, hopefully one day when I go to France, a little Frenchman comes up and sells me some bits for the original car. So the original car was destroyed. Um, so over the years, a number of people have actually wanted to build a recreation of this car. But uh, most people have built sort of projects, never actually finished. I got in touch with uh, Walter's sons who run an engineering consulting business, and they've had a number of people over the years uh, speak to them about you know, building a recreation of this car. Uh, so mine is the first one that's actually was finished. There's also another one in New Zealand now. Uh, after I've been building this for two years, uh, Garth got in touch with me from New Zealand and said, do I mind if, if he builds one as well? I said, nah, we're never gonna meet. Uh, and then last year, uh, two years ago, we went to Montelary for vintage revival. Um, both the cars were there, and this was the first time this one ran. Uh, Japic recreation. This is uh, the first picture I saw of the Japic. Uh, it's the iconic picture of them lifting the back end in the air. Uh, this is the picture that actually uh, enthused me to build one of these cars. Um, there's a lot of research that goes into it. Uh, we had to find, I had to find many pictures. So I'm lucky enough that this car was very well publicised in period and there was many many pictures. I spent some time at the VSCC library researching stuff. It's always best to go back to the original source uh, rather than things written afterwards. Um, there's an awful lot of LAT photographs which are excellent. These are glass plate photographs and you can zoom right in and get some amazing details. These are invaluable in actually finding parts of the car uh, and how it's built. Uh, the car was very well publicized as I say in period and it was actually in the national press. This is 1925 and you can imagine this car was looking like a spaceship in 1925. It was a, a sort of the high-tech end. Um, so then you start to think about how to build one of these cars. So I bought the best side view picture I had into CAD. So with the CAD package I could actually draw dimensions on the car. The only dimension I really knew was the tyre size and the wheel diameter. <coughs> Using the wheel diameter I could scale the rest of the car off and start using this to manufacture parts and see how it was going to fit together. It was deceptively long, this car, uh, despite it being a very small car. So here it is, the, um, the almost finished Japic. Um, the bodywork, the top bodywork is nearly done. Uh, it just needs welding together, but due to the, the coronavirus and the new normal, whatever that happens to be, uh, it hasn't been finished off yet. Uh, sadly, the car lives under a cover in the garage. It hasn't been out for over a year. Uh, my garage isn't the driest, uh, as you can see from a little bit of corrosion on it. I call it patination. Uh, let's have a look at some details on the car. So, I had to make the front axle. Uh, the front axle is based on some Chater Lee parts, um, and Chater Lee also made bicycles. So, according to looking at the pictures, you can see a lot of bicycle components, or very similar to bicycle components. Um, Front axle's got springs, uh, friction dampers, all these had to be made. A lot of the parts are drawn up in CAD and then laser cut out. Uh, I know it's a bit cheating, but that's the way it works. Um, fuel tank is off a ransom mower. The engine is a beautiful thing. It's a proper 1924 350 Jap uh, race engine. Runs on methanol. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely thing. It's got a Sturmley Archer gearbox in the bottom there. Um, so it looks some more. I had to completely make the steering wheel. Um, I hadn't got any pictures of the dash on the car. 
I someone sent me a link to a, a Pathé newsreel called the World's Smallest Racing Car, which is all about the Japic, one minute, 50 seconds, and it's the only view I've seen of the dashboard. Uh, so I managed to recreate as much of that as I can. Uh, the steering wheel is the same as the one the original. Back axle, because it's essentially a motorcycle drivetrain. The back axle is solid, there's no differential. Um, and it's supported by tension wires over the outside of it. Um, so the axle, the drivetrain is just off to one side. There we go. Brakes, rear end. So you can see the chassis. Uh, the chassis is, is all made of ash. It was uh, in laminations and then bonded together. So the outside strip you can see is just there for mounting the bodywork. The three layers on the inside are actually the structural layers. Okay, so I made a big jig to make the bend. And if you look at the car, you can see there's a, a curve in every single direction. So it's actually a 6.5 meter radius in this curve. Um, and the, the beams were actually made in two parts and then bonded together. So most of the pieces you can see had to be fabricated and made. Um, it's difficult to make these things sometimes. You have to think back how people would have made it in the 20s. So you have to sort of um, look at the machine shop, the processes they have. Um, my friend Mark Owen and I managed to sand bend the exhausts. This is my first ever attempt at sand bending. Um, they need a bit of cleaning up now, they're getting a bit rusty. The front nose is quite interesting. It's, it's um, quite a nice shape. Uh, surprising amount of work involved. So I had to make up a former. So this is the former. So this is made in a, in a hammer form. So an aluminium crucifix is actually ratchet strapped across the center lines. And then with a five mil uh, extra excess on the edge, with a mallet, it's hammered down around the edge to form the, the shape. It probably took me two days to make the former and it took me 15 minutes to form up the shape. You can see with the return edge like this all around. So it's surprising the amount of work you need for the, just a simple part like that. So the work you put into the former is, is replicated in the, in the actual finished item. So the car is very light, two of us can lift it up quite easily, um, which is a bit lucky. Um, okay, so uh, that's about it, that's how to build your cycle car. Um, one day I'll get the thing finished and we'll get out on it. I've got to apply for eligibility committee and uh, get it VSCC registered sort of thing, so certificated. So we'll see how it goes, see if they like it or not. So uh, the first time we ran the car was at Monteleri in uh, 2019. Uh, the car hadn't even started before we got to Monteleri. I managed to have a bit of a problem with the oil pump. I was building the car, then suddenly realized the oil pump I had was for clockwise and not anti-clockwise or the other way around. So I had to send the oil pump away to be rebuilt. It was a bit of a rush job and the oil pump didn't come back until the Thursday before we left. So we, we drove to Monteleri, not having started the car ever. Uh, Marco and I, we managed to work on the car for Saturday um, and then suddenly Marco said to me, right, that's it, it's time, you've got to go and start it now. So we, we went over to the back of you know, the restaurant in the nice quiet area, uh, thinking nobody would be around and suddenly many people came out of the, uh, the restaurant, all gathered around to try and watch the first ever start up of the car. Um, so I got in the car, pushed it into first gear, pushed off and within about 10 feet the car had started and it started to run quite well which was a bit of a shock um, throughout the whole Saturday uh, we did a few more runs around the car park and got the car better and better um, and then Sunday morning uh, we did some more running Sunday afternoon was our last opportunity to get out on the track and I thought well it's time so we managed to push start the car 
and I was intending just to do one lap around the track. So halfway around one lap, it's feeling very, very good indeed. Uh, but then the, the, the air pump for the fuel tank dismantled itself. Probably the only bit of the car I hadn't made or looked after myself. Um, so we ran out of air. Uh, the car managed to finish its lap. Sounds really good. Uh, then it got parked. Um, a few months later, a month later, we got invited to the Festival of Sloth. Um, we spent the whole weekend running up and down the hill. The car was going exceedingly well. It needs some work on the gear selector. I've got a new gear selector and quadrant for it. But these things, they don't work first time. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.